Advent is the waiting season, hoping to be rediscovered. She is seasoned waiting, wishing wisdom and pregnant with promised life. She is a season conceived each day. This poem by Joseph Juknialis reminds us of Advent, how we have journeyed together through the waiting season, finding encouragement from God's fierce hope, just peace and resilient joy along the way. Today, we enter into the story, aware of the bold love that God made flesh in Jesus. It is a story we'll hear unfold today in song and story, in a long tradition we mark along with others around the world called Lessons and Carols. In a series of nine lessons and accompanying carols, we'll experience God's creation of the first humans, God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah, the prophecies of Isaiah pointing to one who will pierce the darkness, the shoot that springs forth from the stump of Jesse, the angel's announcement to Mary of the Messiah who will grow in her womb, the birth of Emmanuel in a poor stable around the world, the experience of such news by shepherds and sages whose lives were forever changed, and God, John's story, John's story of this word made flesh, full of grace and truth. And as we hear again the old, old story, we'll see a beautiful image of what good news looks like in practice. A song and a story that out of darkness, light. Out of fear, hope. Out of conflict, peace. Out of despair, joy. Out of indifference, love. Bold love, pregnant with promised life and conceived every day. I'm Emily Hull McGee. I'm one of the pastors here. And on all our behalf, I welcome you this day to worship with First Baptist Church on 5th. May God be born anew this day. Let us worship God together. When we gather in this room for worship, part of the rhythms of our worship are to share the peace of Christ with one another. Usually it looks rather boisterous. We reach across the aisles, we stretch behind our pew, we embrace, we press our hands together, we look one another in the eye and we share the words of peace. It has been many months since we have done that in this room and yet that is among the many rituals of which I long to be back together. 
I think of you, I hold your faces in my mind as I look around this space and I summon up all the energy of peace from all the many weeks we share it with one another and now say to you, for you to share this day, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. As we prepare now to hear the story of God's bold love for this world, we bid God to come with us using words of a bidding prayer, words spoken round the world for years and years. Would you join me in our prayer? Beloved in Christ, with delight we prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels, to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and to see the loving kindness of our God and the babe lying in a manger. Let us therefore open the Holy Scriptures and read the earliest story of our disobedience to God's holy will, which is common to us all, and then the story of the birth of Jesus Christ our Lord to save us from our sins, and let us thank him with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of this whole world, a world fragmented by warring factions and rampant injustice. We pray for peace and for goodwill over all the earth. Hear us, O oh God, in the silence of our hearts. We pray for reconciling love and unity within the church Christ formed to be his continuing body to minister to the world. Hear us, O oh God, from the depths of our spirits. We pray for the poor, the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved. Hear us, O oh God, as we seek your strength. We pray for those who do not know the Lord Jesus, or do not love him, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Hear us, O oh God, as we yearn to tell your good news. We pray for the great cloud of witnesses of all times and places whose hope is in the word made flesh and whose home is with you forever. Hear us, O oh God, as we join with them to give you praise. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The first lesson, Genesis 3, 8 through 15. God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking at the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me. She gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing What's in Royal David City.
The second lesson. God promises to Abraham that his descendants, all nations of the earth, shall be blessed. Genesis 22, 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The third lesson comes from the prophet of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. 
He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fourth lesson. The peace that Christ will bring is foretold. Isaiah 11, 1 through 4 and 6 through 9. A shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, 
for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The fifth lesson, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary. This is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38 and verses 46 through 55. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and his name is holy. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength from his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. 
He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing, What Child Is This? The sixth lesson taken from the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 and 3 through 7. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and to who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seventh lesson, the shepherds go to the manger. Luke 2, verses 8 through 16. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The eighth lesson, taken from the second chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 11. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and, the Beth and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the ninth lesson, John unfolds the great mystery of the incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the, the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
in story and song today. We have heard of God's bold love for this world. And I tell you, at its core, God's bold love sometimes sounds to me like what the Hamilton musical would call the world turned upside down, right? Unexpected bearers of that truth, reversals of power and status, revolutionary and radical expressions of the character and nature of God, all in ways intended to stir us with possibility. And to me, this upside down vision is shared so clearly in what we heard earlier in Mary's song or the Magnificat. What news she had received, a son called Jesus would be conceived by the Holy Spirit, the son of God reigning in a kingdom that will never end. But with courage that transcended anything expected of a person of her, her gender, her age, or race, or life stage, or marital status, social location, economic viability, or power in this world, Mary heard the story. She hummed the song. She caught the imagination of God. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be. She set out with haste to visit Elizabeth, probably a, a big sister or an aunt figure for her, doing what women have done for generations, sharing in profound and intimate companionship all the changing seasons of life. Two women overlooked and lowly, one too old, one too young, have been unexpectedly blessed with new life stirring within them. New life that is holy and scary and blissful and terrifying all at once. And in the company of women, in the community of women, there between two of the unlikeliest carriers of divine spark, God's bold love stirs and kicks and leaps in wombs filled with surprise. Blessing pours forth on each other and the world. A prophetic song tells of a God who changes everything. And the world turns upside down, Mary tells us. God has looked with favor, God has shown strength, God has scattered the proud, God has brought down the powerful and lifted the lowly and filled the hungry. Not just if you notice that God will do those things, but God has done those things. For like Fred Craddock says, to speak of what God has done is to announce what God will do. And there, Mary, in all her fullness and her humanness and her lowliness and her unexpectedness, bore God's bold love in this world, singing of God's new day that dawns. Well, as we've learned today and heard today, the world turned upside down is the story and the song of God's bold love for this world since the very beginning. Generations as numerous as the stars emerging from a pair of barren, aging seniors People in darkness seeing a great light, a child born to lead, a shoot that springs forth from deadened stumps, wolves and lambs and cows and bears and lions and lambs in peaceable kingdom with each other. The creator of the universe entering the world through the womb of a young woman from Nazareth. God with us announced to a bunch of no-name shepherds on a holy hillside, word made flesh full of grace and truth. For that's what God's upside down world looks like. For if God can bear bold love in the world through Abraham and Sarah, Isaiah and Jeremiah, Moses and David, through Elizabeth and Mary and John the Baptist, through shepherds and wise men and, 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 then God has and God can and God will do so with any person, any body, any friend and neighbor, any enemy and adversary, the child detained at the border, the lonely octogenarian, the frazzled parent, the widower, the anxious teenager, the power-hungry stockbroker, the quiet retiree, any race, any age, any gender, any orientation, any education, any background, any means, you and you and you and me. For God invites us all to hear the melody of bold love, to hum it and learn it and sing it and belt it out to a world that needs reminding that a new day is on the horizon, that fierce hope and just peace and resilient joy and bold love are God's dream for us all. Medieval mystic and theologian Meister Eckhart once said, we are all meant to be mothers of God, 
For what good is it to me if this eternal birth of the divine son takes place unceasingly, but does not take place within myself? And what good is it to me if Mary is full of grace, if I am also not full of grace? What good is it to me for the creator to give birth to his son, if I do not also give birth to him in my time and my culture? This then is the fullness of time when the Son of God is begotten in us. As Pastor Tom Long tells the story, it unfolded on a bleak midwinter morning, the weekend before Christmas, kind of like this one actually, when he traveled to pay a visit to a friend. The friend's neighborhood was decked out to the gills and all the inflatables and twinkly lights and reindeer on the roofs as far as the eye could see. But as Tom entered his friend's home and ascended the stairs to greet him, the scene shifted, dimmed, closed in, and quieted down. For you see, this friend was lying still in his bed, tended carefully by family and hospice nurses. Disease had ravaged his body, had mangled his face, his arms, his spirit, all of which seemed to stretch and scream out in silent pain. Death would come soon, anyone could see that. We sat mostly silent, Tom said, not an, not an awkward silence, but more the stillness of old friends content to sit and stay and bid farewell with quietness. But then sounds began to interrupt the hush. A shuffle of feet, a muffled voice or two, a hummed note, and a question that seemed to stump a gathering of people. For you see, the church choir from this friend's church had come to sing to him, but they asked themselves, what should you sing to a dying man? Their voices started softly at first, Tom said. Lo, how a rose air blooming. My friend and I looked at each other and waited as the choir slowly climbed the stairs, their voices growing nearer and stronger to show God's love aright. The choir was now standing in the doorway, for you see, these friends had sung together for years, their voices joining in hours of rehearsal, their love for one another strengthened in weekly gathering, their acute awareness of the mystery of God shimmering with each harmony that hung in the room, their notes of hope amidst despair, lament, mingled with joy, sounding the utter truth of the good news of God's love. Tom remembered my friend deep into the darkness of dying and still agonizing hours away from the dawn turned away so that they wouldn't see his tears as he listened to them sing. She bore for us a savior when half spent was the night. Friends, as we enter into this Christmas week, in this season filled with far too many agonizing hours away from the dawn, and filled with all that this season may hold for you, the grief, the loneliness, the exhaustion, the joy, the rest, the anger, the fierce, maddening hope, may we become those who willingly respond to God May we become those bearers of God's bold love into the world. May we become proclaimers of the upside down kingdom of justice and joy. May we stay in the company of one another to sing the songs of faith and to tell the stories of Jesus when we can't sing them ourselves. And may in it all, may Christ be born anew, even in this day, even when half spent was the night. Amen. Please join us in singing Angels We Have Heard on High.
us join our voices with those of the angels as we sing together these words of praise. In story and song, you have heard today of God's bold love for this world. Love made flesh in a baby, love as word, full of grace and truth. Love that lifts the lowly, love that saves and sustains, love that invites you and me to walk in the way of life. If today you have heard that invitation and it has prompted you to a new understanding of God, made real in your life through Jesus Christ, we celebrate that with you. Or if today you have heard an invitation to join as a part of a community of faith, to find others that will walk this road with you and sustain you along the way, we celebrate that with you as well. Reach out to us, let us know of what is unfolding in your life. You can do that and find out more about our church on our website, firstonfifth.org, where there you can find contacts for any of our staff and learn how we sense God calling us in this place. We will gather again this Thursday night, not in this place, but on Zoom online. At 4.30, we will gather on Zoom for anyone who would like so that we can share in some form of a live experience with one another as we watch together our Christmas Eve worship. It will also be available on YouTube that night and our church house will be lit from within and around outside. If you're out driving around on Christmas Eve looking for lights, come by our church right here at 501 West 5th Street. You will see the light that persists. We just bear witness to that light for we know it in Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So now, friends, as we end this form of worship, to begin again the worship that is our very lives, may we go forth with that light to bear it in a weary world. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.